On the wake of Nigeria's independence, agriculture was one of the critical sectors driving the economy of the country. Besides providing food for the population of the new country, the sector was a major source of foreign exchange and contributed to the gross domestic product of Nigeria. While agriculture boomed at that time, there was urgent need to avert the possibility of food crisis and control commodity price booms and busts. It was also imperative to address environmental concerns, regulate trade tensions and guide the government in the formulation of agricultural policies. These critical national concerns propelled the University of Nigeria to establish as one of its pioneer departments, the Department of Agricultural Economics and Extension in 1961. Um, we enrolled in 1963 and uh, graduated in 1967. The, the zero hour graduates, you know, just before the Civil War really, I entered this university in 1966 at the age of 18 from King's College Lagos on the And then <clears throat> the war came in after one year. We came back 71 and I graduated 73. We were the first set of newcomers. After I used this, I came back here and started work. July 1974. Um, when I joined the department, we didn't have many staff. That was the problem. The university started this junior, uh, fellow, uh, junior fellowship program to train indigenous staff. So each year in each department, the best two students provided is called two one and above. They are invited to come back to the university to be trained as a staff. Uh, in my department, eventually there were three of us who were trained. I was the second set. Since the inception of the department it has pursued its mandate with commendable vigor, the department has over the years demonstrated diligence in supplying skilled manpower to the Nigerian agricultural sector. Thorough cutting edge researches of its staff and students, the Department of Agricultural Economics has provided useful advice to the government in matters of policy formulation and problem solving. The achievements of the department over the years are reflections of the resilient spirit and the determination of its staff and students to succeed against all odds. I was the, the third person to make first class in the department after. Uh, Dr. Kalogi was the first, then Professor Orama, uh, Kevin Orama was the second, then uh, it took a long while before the next one, next person came on board, over 10 years or close to 15 years before then 2004 I made the first class, that was the third, the third time we uh, were able to record the uh, first class in the department. After me, it was like an open door. The next year, there were three of them. The next year, we were trading, you know, just like that. And since then, we've always had three class. With a total of 27 students, population in 1966, the Department of Agricultural Economics started its success story. The Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture then was Professor Payne, while Professor Warren Vincent served as the head of the department. Other staff of the department included Professor Carl Eichel, and Professor L. Bogan. All the staff were seconded from Michigan State University. However, the Nigerian Civil War, which started in 1967, halted the progressive march of the department. At the end of the war in 1970, all the staff from the Michigan State University had relocated, leaving only Mr. Felix Weke, an assistant lecturer, as the only academic staff in the department. By August 1970, Mr. Nweke left to Michigan State University for further studies. It was therefore a critical period for the department when it officially opened for the 1970 stroke 1971 session without any academic staff. The Commissioner for Agriculture of the East Central State, Dr. L. Obibwako, was approached by the management of the University of Nigeria for assistance. 
he graciously transferred two lecturers, Mr. S.A.J. Ezenekwe and Mr. C.T. Owaka, from the School of Agriculture Umudike to the department. Mr. Ezenekwe, who arrived first, was, a, uh, was appointed acting head of the department. Emerging from the debris and dilapidation of the Civil War, the Department of Agricultural Economics restarted its journey to the restoration of the dignity of man. By the time the war ended, when we started after the war, we didn't even have a white staff. So most of our staff then were white and they went during the war. They didn't come back. So there was no staff in this department at the end of the war. When we started the 1970 academic, 1771. Um, by the grace of God, the Commissioner for Agriculture, Professor Lawrence will be back was approached and he went to the School of Agriculture in Modike, now at Ishiago, to and sent two lecturers to us, one for agri-economics, the other one for agri-extension. But what saved us was that we used to take a lot of our courses from outside the department, so we were going to sociology, psychology, economics, mathematics, statistics, and many other departments will take us. So we're still taking courses until this week to teach the purely agricultural economics and extension courses. The department has over the years produced graduates who have made their marks and are still making useful contributions in various sectors of the Nigerian society. Even in the movie industry, even if it comes to a government house, be it at World Bank, be it at Central Bank of Nigeria, do you know that Dr. Kalu Oji is a Central Bank of Nigeria? There is no industry in this world you can talk without seeing an agri-economics. Consultancy services is better done by agricultural economics. Permit me to say that there is no donor agency that you can talk of today that must not seek the advice and the consultancy services of an agricultural economics. Who will interpret the graph you have? The way you see graph as another person from other profession is not the way we agri economics train one for that matter from the University of Nigeria and Stockholm. You see it. And then you continue to tell me that uh, oh, why should another person go to another course? Even if you are studying medicine law, you can challenge us. We are the people that are on the ground. We interface with both micro and mi micro economics. People are the grassroots. We go to fish data from them. Use the data that is uh, from MPC and um, uh, MPX to give you the policy trend positively how we, we speak the truth. That's why the course agric economics is best, not better, best than any other course you can take up, especially if you're a product of University of Nigeria and Soka from Agricultural Economics Department. Go to me anywhere. Okay. Yes, the, the greatest motivation is my belief that uh, the uh, role of agriculture in any economy is a timeless, is a timeless uh, phenomenon. And that uh, uh, managing agriculture, managing agriculture uh, economy will also be a timeless uh, phenomenon. So I think these forces uh, combined with my inner conviction right from time, right from time. I, uh, it is not something I can uh, Easily uh, justified in terms of, but not as I say it is a calling. You know, uh, that's why, truthfully, the first choice, second choice, third choice was most agri economics. And, uh, uh, today I'm happy, I'm proud, I'm blessed to be an agri economist. So I want to encourage uh, the uh, upcoming students, uh, the students of today, and every one of us to. Uh, seek to do the best and uh, put in the best uh, into the profession and get the best also out of the profession. Yeah, uh, excellent place. Very good people pass through there. Um, wonderful people.
most spread out, out all over the world. Wonderful people have been in contact with uh, Professor Emmanuel and that he had said the capacity building foundation in Harare. He was there, I hope that I got back with him. Sitting on something very good. Wonderful, wonderful people spread all over the place. And I think that's that's the that's the direction of the future. Today is a dark project of this. It goes across disciplines. And it's like it's a career that can you can endeavor in any human field with the skill you acquire that culture and colonies. You can endeavor to excel in any field. Well, I know like there are policy makers. Uh, it's, a, it's a program that uh, cuts across, you know. Even in the field of social sciences, you can actually fit in. Agriculture can also fit in. It's a broad-based program. It's not as 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 it's not in I told, the rest of my knowledge. It's not a, a program just like crop science or soil science that is just focused on one aspect. You know, as an agricultural economist, you are a policy maker, you are an agriculturist, you know, and uh, it exposes you to a lot of. Uh, if you are doing agroeconomics, you should know a little bit about how to manage a farm. Combination of crops, seeding rates for any crop. You should know about poultry, what to feed to birds. You should know and that and compute them into, into they put the economics of it. So that when you move out, you should be able to do that. That was the advantage I had when I moved into the practice the real agriculture, it can send a nation like Nigeria. It performed the miracle before. It's just that we discovered all the and uh, the thing literally became a cause. And now the government now wants to sit back to agriculture and solid minerals. The department has produced vice chancellors, renowned professors, economic advisors in reputable institutions like the African Development Bank, World Bank. UNICEF, United Nations Development Programme, just to mention a few. It's important to note that governments at different levels look up to professionals from the department for guidance on both policy matters in the agricultural sector and in other areas of economic concern. Credit must be given to the heads of departments who over the years have contributed in positioning the Department for Global Competitiveness in the field of agricultural economics. Professor Payne, Dr. Warren Vincent, Mr. J.A. Ezenekwe, Professor M.O. Ijeri, Professor L.O. Obibwako, and Professor F.I. Weke. Others include Professor O. Okereke, Professor E.O. Arua, Professor S.A.N.D. Chidebelo, Professor E.C. Okoji, Professor E.C. Wabu, Professor C.J. Arene, Professor Mrs. A.I. Achiki, and Professor J.N. Weze. The labors of these diligent men and women have resonated in the high quality of graduates which the department has continued to produce. However, it is regrettable that the physical infrastructure of this great department has been allowed to rot. The departmental building is in a sorry state. The building is dotted with dilapidated classrooms, shanty library, decrepit staff offices, leaking roof and rickety furniture. I think we are living in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the past two centuries as far as infrastructure is concerned. For instance, the, the, the office is leaking, that you know. And uh, if, if you look around, this I am a professor <laughs> and this is my office, you can imagine. Some of us are also teachers in uh, universities outside Nigeria as adjunct members of staff. And we have our offices there, well equipped, well furnished. But, Coming back here, you find yourself in something like a store called office. But that is what we have, and that's what we are using. So, infrastructurally, I would say that it is nothing to write home about, but I think that would be good news. This place looks like an oven. The ceiling is down. There's no fan, no aircon. As you can see, the aircon that's supposed to be here is locked. And then it's working out. And we have a lot of leakages here reaching to the administration, yet no response. 
it's not what I'm conducive for us to stay in us. When you're working like it's winning, you see so many cages here and there. When you read the classroom, the general office here, the other offices, and you see the our documents. And we're waiting to the vice chancellor several. They came here for maybe to take, maybe what, what it will take to repair this one. And after I said, I'm not, it's just in there like that. I recall the days of, you know, reading the, the, the prefab, you know, the agri-economic department used to be uh, in the same building as, as uh, agri-extension. And uh, just when uh, the prefab building and... We were staying in the pre prefab, the prefab where you have, uh, I don't know what is there now, where you have agri-extension, we were sharing it with the uh, agri-extension department until Cordinia, the then Vice Chancellor, approved that we build our own department, which is where I, I presume we are now staying uh, as a great economics department. The challenge uh, was not just for uh, the challenge peculiar to the department. The challenge was that um, faculty of agriculture, because it was B agri so it was only in final year you come to specialize. So the faculty of agriculture was not um, was somehow marginalized because well the old building that the white people put there that we are using, and then when we are in prefab before where the agri extension was staying before uh, that small building called the departmental uh, building was put up, you know. So it had been a case of. Uh, have a lack of space, even with uh, offices, good offices for the lecturers and the good lecture hall. So that was the problem we faced, you know. Uh, then it used to be agricultural economics and extension. I think sometime in 1982 or so, we got split into two groups. Uh, no, no, maybe that's still 81 or so. Some people went to agriculture economics and some to agriculture extension. And I, I, I found myself in agriculture economics, they did all that. Then that's a long time now. Um, yeah, we were we, we in, the, in, the, in the building with the, with the wood, you know. As a student then, you know, uh, the library, the library was so wonderful. So, and at times, the issue of the classroom, because we had to share classroom with people, you know, people doing other courses there. So we had to share classroom. But I hope with time, there were more classrooms for PG students, and maybe those students and masters and other people. But then we're sharing one class. Uh, okay, so as a young lecturer in this department, it, um, things haven't really been very easy. Um, I don't know, as you can see, the, the environment is not optimal. So the building, the, the, the building here is leaking. The, there's a death of um, teaching aids. Like most times, when you, when you want to reject your lectures, and all, there's, either, there's either no light or not enough um, projectors. Probably the, the, the single projector will have to be used by another lecturer in another class. So you don't have to um, change or change your, your lecture time or postpone your lecture or you teach without the, those kids. And at the end, the students are not better off for that. So. Um, this is my office. As you can see, we are four in this office. But uh, originally, this is supposed to be the data analysis lab of the department. But, we don't have computers and um, because of lack of offices for the number of staff to have in this department, this place has to be converted to an office. So for now, we don't have any data analysis lab and um, we're just using this place as an office. So we are out of stock now, like we don't know the exact. So the only challenge we have now is building and uh, light, so there's a problem because now everything is computerized, they must have light. The gen that we have is uh, gone, we've used it, used it, repaired it, used it and there is a point where uh, we can no longer repair it, so we need a, a fairly light gen to carry the department when there is power failure. The building, the building get low self-esteem. <laughs> the building is very bad. You see, environment really affects 
one's psychological state. Uh, then our class, again our class, for now, we study together, the five core agri departments, we study together. So our population most times is much. Even though, okay, we're not much here, but relative to the class size, now you compare it with the people, uh, our successors, like the third years, second years, first years, they have increasing number of population. So you imagine how they are going to poop. So imagine a situation where students are jam packed, you know, heat and everything. Actually, during the hot season, this old AG hall is always, I mean, it's always a problem. No, for the fans, they are not working. Okay, so it's, that's the challenge we have. The uh, problem facing the faculty is that of mainly infrastructure. The building cannot accommodate the ever increasing number of students and the ever increasing number of uh, staff population. So there is then need for uh, infrastructural development in the Faculty of Agriculture. And let me let me inform you that the present administration in the university, headed by Professor P. Zumba, is doing uh, everything possible to secure sponsorship from uh, 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 from uh, uh, philanthropists and uh, and uh, grant awarding organizations to see if we are able to uh, erect a defeating structure for faculty of agriculture. However, this is where the alumni, the, the alumni association of both the faculty and that of agricultural economics becomes uh, very important because uh, you will agree with me that in most uh, universities. Uh, the, 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 the strength of every university, be it in Africa or in uh, Europe or in Western world, is that of the alumni. The alumni is uh, uh, responsible for a lot of development programs because they are, they, the alumni association is uh, a major stakeholder in the development of the university and the, 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 the department and faculty. The condition of the Department of Agricultural Economics can be likened to that of a mother who nurtured many successful children but was abandoned to live in squalor and abject lack at old age. Regardless of the challenges, the department has continued to trudge on, hoping that one day its dream of having a befitting building will come to reality. A befitting building with modern offices and classrooms is needed to match the glorious future of the department. It is time to build the Department of Agricultural Economics, which will truly represent the quality of its graduates. It is time to restore the structural dignity of the Department of Agricultural Economics. The time for action is now. Yeah, the homecoming of alumni of the department is motivated by the fact that the department has come a long way. It's one of the first departments established in the university in 1961. And since then, we have not had a forum where everybody that graduated from the department will come together, discuss, you meet your classmates, you network. People are out there in the developing world, in academia, in businesses, in the banking industry, and so on. And they have not met after more than 50 years. So we feel that we should come home, look at ourselves, and look at that department that nurtured us and see where we move from because our yesterday is, is here. So that's the motivation. We want people to come back and see their departments and see their classmates, see their friends, different generations. That will be fun. That will be exciting. So the motivation is just to come together and felicitate with one another. So this uh, uh, homecoming will be a, a source of motivation to the department and the students of uh, APMA. And um, this uh, homecoming will open a, a communication channel between the department and the alumni, even the students. So, and uh, on the motivation side, at least they will educate the students, the APMA, on the areas, the challenges they've had outside here. So, and they kind of try to pave way for the APMA, the undergraduates. The challenges they will face after graduation. I think this homecoming, I think and I believe that it's going to be um, a union of people from different areas, different with different ideas, with different uh, uh, prospects, with different careers, and it's a plus for, for the students and the staff. Um, you know the alumni of any institution. They are supposed to be 
the mirror image of that institution. They are supposed to be the products of that institution. And when you talk about homecoming, you are saying that they are coming to see what it is their alma mater is uh, what is looking like. So when they are interested in coming, it means that they are happy with their institution that modeled and molded them. So um, my advice, like you asked, is that they should remember their institution that the institution brought them up and they were, the institution is part of what they are today and they should try as much as possible to come and see their home which is the institution and give back a little bit of what they derived from that institution to keep the institution afloat. I think it's a good development because before now, it has not been so long. I have not heard about it. The homecoming of uh, the alumni. So, starting today, I think it's starting early, and I feel that uh, it will also do one or two things in the positive direction in the department, in terms of developing the department and assisting in some of the uh, departmental needs. I think I've trained people to take over from me. Yeah, so I'm a very happy man, contented man. Uh, when I retire in the next few months, I think I'll be very happy. But I've, uh, that's why I'm trying to do this homecoming for them. All this course, the, the departments we are building, and uh, this is a modification of our program. These are what I want to finish, and then hand over to the next department within the next two weeks. And I'll be happy that I've done my, I've done my duty. So when the department takes so they are going to, they shouldn't have any problems, much problems. They, they, they will grow. We have competent people. A lot of these people now had first classes, and so on and so forth. Um, so they are, and they've gone abroad and showed that their first classes were not uh, organized. Uh, so they, 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 most of them came back with distinctions from the universities they went outside the country. So they are competent people. So I have no problem, I have no doubt that we'll have some of the best brains in this department. Thank you very much.